Cali on the drum All right. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I need you. I know who you are, obviously, but I need you to introduce yourself for those who don't. Oh, I am Ricky Tan. I'm not Asian, man. My eyes low. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear, man. What you been up to? Shit, working, making music, uh, trying to get this podcast my own off the ground. I'm my cousin. Oh. We've been working on these clothes. Okay. Uh, trying to get a little baby tour going. Okay. Doing a single run. And drop, drop an album with my homie, Akari. Okay, we're gonna talk about all that then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so so what's your, so I know you since forever. So right. I know you since damn, it's been a long time. It's been about twenty years. Mm-hmm. Damn. I mean, what's the first song you ever made? Uh, hey, start a kid. What it do? What it is? <laughs> you remember that shit? <laughs> was that in the valley yeah okay okay so when did you start officially rapping because when I met you you was writing but that's when Quentin let me rap that's what it was <laughs> Quentin took my rap book remember when I had the little rap book I used to write every day all the time and Quentin like you didn't learn to freestyle he took my rap book why he took your rap book so I learned how to freestyle so I know how to, you need to be able to rap soon somebody tell you to rap like rap right now so you always ready okay so how old was that then I was like 11, 12, when I had that rap. I started rapping, I was like nine. Trying to mm-hmm. rap when I was like nine or 10, but I was ready. And I was like 12, 13. I'm like, bro, let me rap. <laughs> That's when I was like, get on everybody there. Like, bro, let me rap. Let me get on the mic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of this. Let me rap. You crazy. So, I mean, so what was the first official project you did? Uh, I did one right before I left high school okay. called uh, Remedy. Okay, Remedy. I know it was Rick something then. Dang. Yeah, okay. Rick something. I had the little, my homeboy drew it. I'm going to adjust your microphone. Hold on. Yeah. I don't want people to see me on camera, but I guess they're going to see me for half a second. Delete it. I am. Because <laughs> you're more quiet than I thought you would be. Yeah. There you go. It. I'm sorry. I don't no, it's all good. Right, back to what we were saying. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> there we go. We back. <laughs> so, officially, it was Remedy. When, when yeah. did that come out? Remedy. I, well, Rick something. Rick, Remedy made Rick something album, but... uh. Wait, say that again? That's when I was changing my name. So I was like, how am I going to change my name? I'm just going to drop an album with a new name. So okay. That's what I was doing. So I made it uh, probably like 2009 or okay. 8. I said it on YouTube the other day. I was like, dang. So you got to send me that link. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Super old. And I was like, ooh, what am I talking about? Oh, you terrible. Okay, let me go back. So what made you want to start rapping uh, before your brother said, no, you're going to freestyle? <laughs> my brother. My brother was constantly making beats. And y'all was over there all the time. And it was like... <laughs> And I'm watching it, because you know what I used to do all day? I'd be a zombie watching music videos over and over. And I'm like, boy, I can do this. Okay. I can do this. I've been saying it forever. Yeah, you, you like, mm-hmm. dog, when I say how much you've grown, mm-hmm. like, this shit is just, fun. I mean, you didn't suck then, but, like, obviously, you're 11 years old. I couldn't put it together then. It's like, <laughs> I had it. It's like how I want to say it. I knew how, what I was trying to say, I just could not say it right. Because right. I got too much stuff going on. Like, my mom's going to hear this and be mad because I said it like this. Yeah, and cussing. Yeah. <laughs> Quentin mad because I'm talking about this. And I'm like, okay. He's like, you don't even live that life. He yelled at me. Okay. <laughs> so how did you make the transition from just writing words that rhyme to actually making composition? Like, Man, putting it together. Growing what, up, what was that? Growing up, shit happens. And then it's like, bro, I got to. Get it off me, because that's how it works now. Now that I make music, I don't even, I don't know if many people listen to their own music, but I barely do, because mm-hmm. my junk's like memories. When I make a song, it's a memory. It's like something that happened, and I need oh, it off Oh, storytelling. Me. Yeah, I needed it off me. Like, I'm not trying to think about it. Okay. That's how I de-stress myself. Because li- I've been listening to the one, that is, is, is Ricky Tan. It looks like like a Miami Nights type of. Yeah. I think, oh. Yeah, Swerve like Jump. Yeah. yeah, but it's melodic, too, though. So yeah. there's a difference from how you used to rap to that. Where did that transition happen? I was rapping and rapping and rapping. I'm like, bro, everybody, because if you've been in the studio, then it becomes a part where you hang up with so many people that styles start to mesh and people start to sound like this and sound like that. I'm like, I don't got no uh, identity in here. You didn't stand out to, yeah, to yourself like, or other people said that? To, I was getting compared a lot. So it's like, oh, bro, you good, but you sound like this. Oh, you all right, but that sound sound like that. Or, uh, or these are like, and then start being like, oh, you sound like next door neighbor. And right. you sound like dude I know from over here. And I'm like... No, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> but you can sing too, though. Yeah, I taught myself how to sing off uh, really just listening to Usher all the time. Like, what did you do when you were listening to him to 
teach yourself how to sing? I was trying to understand his pitch control. I was trying okay. to understand how he can go low, high, high, low. Chris Brown did the same thing with what that. You mean? Uh, they can go from a high tone and just drop, boom, straight. Oh, like there. a run. Yeah, not even a run. They can just go from here and drop straight down. You know what okay. I'm saying? Out of nowhere. And I was just trying to figure that because that's the first thing that got me into like singing. It's cool. I'm like, how are you doing? Oh, that? gotcha. It's yeah. the vocal control of it all that's really got me into the singing. So it's almost like the science behind it instead of yeah. just the actual singing. I got a little thing where I got to know everything. I don't know a little bit of everything. <laughs> I had that too. That's yeah. why I do everything. <laughs> I got to have a little bit of everything. I'm a little technical, a little, a little this, a yeah. little that. I don't know. So for your brother to be such a phenomenal producer, did you ever want to make beats? Nah, because he was doing it already. Like I said earlier, I'm like, I need it. identity. Okay. It can't be, uh, Quinn little brother made beats too. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. No. <laughs> no. I am me. <laughs> so the end. <laughs> So I gotta go back again. So with backpack music, I know we all over the place because I actually like know you in real life. Yeah, this from is a conversation. Like, Give me a step by step formula of how you got here today. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> Shoot. But, okay. So how did backpack? For those who don't know, explain what backpack music is and how that came to be. It came like uh, cause we from South Carolina and Absolutely. everybody and everybody is screaming. Y'all got up north music. Y'all sound like up north because it's lyrical. Yeah, you feel me? Cause we trying yeah. to rap. So they're like, what what a, what a beats? Y'all ain't mm. taking no ass. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> so we're like, y'all sound like a bunch of backpack rappers. That's what they kept. Cause back in the day, it was backpack rappers. You're right. Back rappers. You're right. And now it's like, fuck it, then we backpack music then. So if if for then to now, would you say music? in this area has shifted to become more lyrical or do you think it's kind of stayed in that same vein? I feel like lyrical went underground. How so? I feel like... Well, tell me what underground means to you and then tell me why you think it shifted. I feel like like fans, cult fans, like, I don't, mm -hmm. like I'm wearing this mm -hmm. merch t-shirt because I fooled this guy, for real. Right. Those type of guys, it's not just... That's an underground vibe now. It's not like you ain't gonna see people just rocking the Wu-Tang because I know RZA and the Jizza and blah, 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 right. it, ain't, it ain't none of that no more. It's just... I know this one song they got, and I like it. So it's more, do you think music, as far as underground, has become more personal? I feel like personal artists go underground. Ah, uh, okay. Like Frank Ocean, stuff like that. Like yeah. If you really about your stuff, they're going to say you underground. If you're really serious about your mm. identity and how you're per perceived and all that stuff, they're going to say that you're underground. So do you think that's better than how music used to be? I'd rather... I, I came up in the 90s, so <laughs> yeah. I'd rather... <laughs> I'd rather everybody really be listening instead of going all oh, that beat hard. I'm, well, you know, I'm the same way. I, yeah. I like good production, obviously, which is why I wouldn't your brother, but yeah. I, you got to say something. Yeah. Not Even just, in the middle of whatever uh, yeah. violent rapping you're doing, I have no problem with. <laughs> the guns and all that stuff. Do your thing, thug. Uh, yeah. say, tell me something. Tell me something. All right. You feel me? Like, I, I want to hear something. Something serious. Something. Because I can't, if I can't connect to the music, I don't really, mm. I can't listen to it. So do you think being around other lyrical rappers helped you go in that direction or you think you probably yeah would i grew up with a bunch of like roderick i grew up with you i grew up with well, b dot mm -hmm. all these guys is just trying to outdo each other you know what i'm saying yeah. it was just like oh i got a better verse than you bro you know what i'm saying yeah. i grew up in that era of like nah i'm about to kill you on this bro ain't no way ain't no way ain't <laughs> right. no way, ain't no way. <laughs> Yeah, but do you, do you wish Backpack would have kept going? Yeah, I wanted to kill y'all. I wanted to be the best. <laughs> I wanted to be better than all y'all, and it just didn't happen. <laughs> well, okay, so why do you think it ended, though? I moved away, but I mean, I went you to You moved away. <laughs> uh, I don't know what Roger was doing. He just, I don't know. Kids went, and everything kids, else. And then he went to battle rap. <laughs> yeah. Quentin went to, I need to be having a hand in everything. Quentin is hey, but he, the jack of all trades yeah. for all trading. He do, I'm going to get his ass in this chair, too. That's the boss. <laughs> you feel me? Do his daggone thing. I'm proud yeah. of my boy. But he became bigger than rap. That's what it was. Mm. I think that all of us just became bigger than what yeah. we were doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. it's dope though to see how much you grow. I know I'm all nostalgic yeah. and shit, but it's cool. like I see the reels and stuff like that. I gotta get to one of your shows. I just work like crazy and I got three kids. But I feel you. like shoot, I took off today so I go to the show. Hey, and and this I've done that too. <laughs> <laughs> like today is one of the only days I'm actually off this week. Everything else is I work in the daytime or I work overnight. Yeah. But um, what kind of show are you gonna be doing today? I know um, this comes out after the show, but I'm doing a little um, intimate. Together thing, I got my homeboy coming with the guitar. We just gonna, oh, that's dope. We just gonna play for him one time. We we do a we got a band. Well, it's not really a band. We just come together sometimes to do shows. Mm -hmm. Who was in the band? Uh, me, Kari, Jeff, B, 
And whoever we want to add, sometimes if we want to add a little flavor or whatever, yeah. we add whoever, whichever homeboy of the day. So they all rap or they play instruments? No, they all play different instruments. So what does each person play? Uh, Kari on guitar, okay. Jess on bass, B is on the drums, I am on front. Okay, how'd you meet all them? Through doing these shows, mostly through Jakari, because Jakari is run, running into anybody to play instruments, because so that's his thing. He does, so how uh, you meet Jakari? I don't know Jakari since I was a baby. I was oh, like, okay, so y'all go way back. We go to elementary school. Okay. Yeah, grandmas know each other type shit. Okay, so have y'all ever thought about doing something like uh, Run the Jewels, like Killer Mike and what's yeah. the white guy named that played the trumpet? Was it? I don't I can't remember either. But you know what I'm talking about how it's like they kind of got their little, not little, that's disrespectful, but their, their thing. Yeah. Have you ever th excuse me, thought about doing something in that vein? Or? Yeah, we, we, we kind of do that now but it's more like boom bappy. We do it more like old school 90 rap type shit. Okay. Like, uh, I listen, listen to a few of our shit that's going to come out okay. after this. But uh, we got a we got a lot of different types of vibes going on. We trying to mix it in. Okay. Like we do a lot of uh, freestyle sets. Like we'll pick songs from our uh, audience or whatever, or they'll tell us the what kind of song they want to hear, and we just play something, make it up on the spot. For real? Yeah. Now, how, okay, where that come from? Because that's Quentin, different. I told you, Quentin. With the you can rap at any time, anything, any bro. I'm a Swiss <laughs> Army knife with the music. I can. But really... there's a difference between being able to do it and doing it during one of your shows. Yeah. What made you say I'm gonna do it during the show? Because I always do it. I'm notoriously like I told you, I never listen to my music. Mm -hmm. So Jakari has always been mad at me because I don't remember the words. So he'd be like, "Bro, you need to know the words of the song." I've been freestyling songs on stage for years. If I don't remember the words. I just make it up right then. Because okay. I, I know timing. I know timing real good because of yeah. Quentin always making the beats. Mm -hmm. So I know timing really, really well. Okay, so what does it look like when you go in the studio? I know what it looked like, mm -hmm. used to look like. What does it look like now when you go in the studio? Uh, I never know what I'm going to do. So I just go in there. It's usually just a beat. I'm really a in the moment type of recording artist mm -hmm. now. So. so do you get the beat and kind of listen to it over the next, say, week? Like, say, if you know you're going to the studio Friday, do you listen to it throughout the week to kind of get a, a vibe of what direction you want to go? Or? And I'm probably with Jakari two, three times out the week if I can, and he's probably making this beat the whole time. And I, so I got a realm of what he's making. Cool. Okay. So when I get to the studio, he's at the finished product. They play it. I'm like, I'm doing this. <laughs> That's okay. how I do it. So how long it take you to do the song, though? Like, like at the most, like 40 minutes, 45 minutes. The whole song? Mm -hmm. Do you like the fact that do you feel being cr music creation is easier now or then? I feel like. It was easier then because I had no kind of realm of it gotta how, be like far, how deep it was going to go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm making this song and it sound like this and this person going to be affected. So I probably shouldn't say that. Da, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was a kid. I'm just like, make the song. Don't care how you feel. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But is it, do you go in there, even though you freestyle, are mm -hmm. you going in there with intention? Like, it, I want not necessarily it got to sound like Usher or it got to sound like Future, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But is there like, I want to make this type of song today? Or? Nah, the beat normally tells me. The beat normally uh -huh. tells me what I'm doing today. The okay. beat uh, send a signal to my mind and my mind says, we're going this way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, it. <laughs> That's it. I feel, so what's the last song you did then? Uh, I got a song called Valley of Death. It's pretty much uh, trying to like flip, speaking how a relationship can be the end all, or it could be the beginning of the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so good or bad. Yeah, it could be okay. the valley of death, or it could be anything you want. So you said your songs are stories. Who inspired that one? Uh, the valley of death is inspired by my girl, E. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the missus. E. <laughs> okay, cool. So mm -hmm. do you have you made any other songs for her as well? Yeah, or? I got a song called Share Your World. That's about her. Okay. Uh, that's because some... People like to DM a lot and say and move and think that they can whatever and I ain't going anywhere, bro. That's all it is. <laughs> he claiming it on camera, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what was like what was it like working with uh Miss Diva? Fun. Fun. Very fun. Okay. She got a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And it's the opposite of me. I'm just <laughs> You be chilling. I'll be so chilling, bro. <laughs> but how y'all link up though? You hit her up, she hit you or uh, we just be in the studio all the time and oh, yeah, I'm, making, I'm making a song over here, she's making a song over there. Mm -hmm. and it's like you should get on the song with me. And I'm like, I do the song. No problem. Okay. So did, how did you go about writing your part? Did you freestyle that as well? Or uh, as soon as it hit me, I'd be saying it. So it'd be coming to me, I think about it, and I write it in my phone. I do it backwards. I say it out loud before I write it. Oh, okay. And then when you write it down, you just want to clean it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. It's like, what was that thought again? You'd be, you'd be mad at me by how many times I'd be like, what did I just say? <laughs> Bro, what we did I just say? So it, 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 I'd be there like, 
But what I just say though, bro, you hear what I said? What I say? <laughs> Dude, all the time. It's not like you might indulge. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so so did she do her verses first? Did you? She always come prepared with her verses. She's always ready okay. to roll. How many songs y'all got together? Probably three. Four. Okay. Mm. Have you ever thought about doing a collaborative album with another person? Not necessarily uh, her, but just anybody. I got a song. I got John Jakari coming out. Uh, I could make an album with Monty, or I could make an album with Blaze at any moment. I got songs with them for days. How many songs you got on Tuck? Like three, four hundred songs. I'm about to go on a single run, bro. I'm finna drop every song I've made. I said I'm not making no more albums. I'm about to drop singles <laughs> until somebody until they start making noise. Period. Okay, why do why did you say I'm not doing another album? Why what's making you do that? Because of the work you have to do, like the work you have to do as an artist that with no backing, like I am, yeah. is so much to do. Plus I got my family, plus I got my job, plus I got my Stuff I got to handle that just happens. Kind of. Hey, we we adult tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too much random stuff going on, and I can't just focus my entirety to the music right now. And to do that would be albums, albums, albums. Uh, but if you got three, four, I'm not if because you have three or four hundred mm -hmm. songs, wouldn't you be able to kind of take say ten and put them together? Or you? I could, but then type of person I am, I need videos. I need to look like this, and I need cover oh, art, and I need this, and we're gonna go here, and we're gonna do these interviews there, and I can't. Okay, so, <laughs> so how, do you have a specific strategy on which songs you're going to drop? Not, don't list off all 300, obviously, but like, nah, it's you just, know, uh, it needs to be the first. I section them off like uh, winter songs, summer songs, spring uh -huh. songs, like that. So yo, what what does a summer song sound like? More bounce to it? or uh, Like Swerve, like I just dropped. Okay. Mm. Another bitch against Swerve. Yeah, you got some fire shit on that. <laughs> right there, yeah. I got another one called uh, Backseat, finna come out. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a ludicrous flip. It's a ludicrous flip. Talking about the bag seed, that's where I like to fall. Okay. Yeah. Is it like a sample or interpolation? It's me. I sampled it. I, I did two hooks together. I did <laughs> I did two hooks together for a real nostalgia effect. What does it sound like? Uh, it goes, uh, I know you've been waiting, shawty. Uh, I know you're waiting for daddy. It won't be long, shawty. Be, be patient because I'm coming to you. Riding dirty in 85, slow taking it easy. I ain't creeping, but I'm coming to you. Cause she like it in the back seat, windows up. That's the way she Okay, like that's good right now. Okay. Shit, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to be checking for that. One. So I had to <laughs> double flip. record it? Yeah, I recorded. I'm just gonna go clean it up and then I'm gonna drop that too. Okay, what's what's what does cleaning it up involve? Uh a little mastery, a little finding where I breathe too many times, oh. or this is too loud, or I need a drop here, or we need a reverb here, or Okay, so you go in there and you hands on with uh, Alton. Yeah, I'm just standing there like, yeah, hey, can we do this? Can we do this? Can okay. we do this? That's the part that I, I get annoying on. Okay, where that come from? Because a lot of people be like, you just do whatever, and I just come back and you email it to me. Uh, fucking Big Surge. Big okay, I'm not Big Surge. Big Surge constantly being like, so what we doing? And I don't know shit. He like, so. Yeah, I recorded. What you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> what you want me to do to it? <laughs> and me being like, ah, uh, make it sound good. I right. don't know. But I think a lot of people do that, though. Yeah. And I think maybe, do you think that's them not having an engineer's ear, or you think that them, they just wrote the music and it's like, well, I did my part, you do the rest? Most people think that that's the whole music industry. I made my song, and now I'm supposed to get famous now. What do you think it is? I think is you made your song, and now you need to make your video, and now you need to get your rollout ready, and now you need to look the part, and now you need to have your backups ready for this, and you need okay. to get your booking agent, and you need to get your live agent. Mm -hmm. Who you got distribution through? Okay. Do you got management? Do you got all that? I got a lot of that. <laughs> so do you feel like? So do you think that independent artists in today's time is it easier to make music or is it not? Is it harder to? When I say music, the whole thing, not just going mm -hmm. there and talking to a microphone. Yeah. Do you think being a musician or an artist in today's time is easier or harder now? Depending on what kind of artist you are. Okay, what, what kind of artists would it be easier for? What kind of artists would it be harder for? Um, what is, who hot right now? Drill artists? You could be a drill artist making a million dollars right now off like of TikTok. Music. TikTok, go crazy. Yeah, I don't care for drill music, but I'm old, so. Yeah, but dr <laughs> drill's popping, so if you was a drill artist, it's a lane for you right now. All you got to do is be the best one. But there's, but there's seven billion people on earth. You're right. the best one. All you got to do is be the best one. So what music is harder to make to the, in today's time? Uh... The hardest music I would say would be one to to beat out the to, to be the most popular. So if you wanted to go into the popular lane, mm -hmm. so I feel like that would be hard to go in there and try to beat out a Dirk or beat out a be little baby or something on album sales or something. That'd be hard. So okay. to go mainstream is still hard to do. Okay. But the hardest thing I would say to do right now would probably be like soul music. 
Why you say soul music? So it's, it's like, like sampling or it's because the media is not really pushing it for you. You feel me? It's not something that's twerking is getting more plays than Jill Scott would. You feel <laughs> right. me? In 2023, I think that's always been that way though. It has, but at least back then they would be like. Yeah, you can I'm still push get your back and yeah. I'm gonna push it. Here go your back and here go this, here go that. Right now know. they want Summer Walker to twerk to what? I don't know. She's already a, a re- reformed stripper, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it. but her music, you heard her music? Yeah, her how, music can, is how can you twerk to this? You ain't supposed to twerk to that music. But they want her to twerk on stage. I don't I mean, understand. You can be sexual, like SZA is sexual, well, here lately, but her music isn't twerking music. I feel you, but this is it's how she views her music. If she views her music to where this is not mm-hmm. no twerking shit, then she probably ain't gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, it don't make <laughs> sense to twerk to some slow shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how she feel about it. It's like, nah. Because if she feel like I feel like, but my, this is serious for me. So right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't finna be twerking in my serious ass song All I made right, about my I real see. life. <laughs> <laughs> so, so which one do we- I'm still having a turn. <laughs> but I feel you, it is weird. But I think that that su- music with substance is still just as hard to get out there as it was then. I just think that maybe because they have the internet, it feels easier to attain. Yeah, it's, you can attain it all day. It's just like the focus. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, they listen to your song that's deep mm-hmm. for a couple weeks, but they're going to listen to whatever's popular because everybody's listening to it. So you get in the car with your friends, you got to play the song that everybody knows. They're not going to play yeah. that deep shit that you listen to by yourself. What me and my, my cousin used to call headphone music. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> perfect. Yeah, because I listen to music more so by myself, so I don't listen to a lot of commercial. Yeah. Like, I don't know about new songs until somebody tell me about it. Right. Because, like, I, in the gym, I got mostly lyrical shit or, well, not lyrical. I do, mix is, is lyrical, but it's more high energy lyrical shit. Yeah, so I'm saying it's yeah. different levels of the lyricism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when I'm riding by myself, shit, it's definitely a little more substance to what I'm listening to. Yeah. But do you, I don't know why that is, though, because people are in their car more than they're in the club. Right. So why do you think people gravitate towards more, what we would say, pop music? It's because of everybody else, I guess, because when you go to the club, you want to know the words. And when you, when we had the concert, I don't want to be the person, they looking at like, this nigga don't know none of the words. Look at him. What are you doing here? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Yeah. It's weird. Why you don't know this song? Everybody in the world know this song. What's up with you? That's how it is. (laughs) Okay, so what is the, so why is it? Artists like Drake, Cole, and Kendrick, who are lyrical. I mean, Cole and Kendrick, obviously, much more than Drake, but they're, mm-hmm. Drake's still lyrical. Mm-hmm. Why do you think they're able to break through? But it's, all, it, it's, it's almost like this little force field of, like, there can only be, like, three or four. That's because of that, that right there. It's like, uh, we're going to let a couple people get through. <laughs> and plus, they are, they are proficient at, like, mixing all brands. Like, you can hear every kind of mm-hmm. rapping in Drake. You can hear every yeah. kind of rapping in Cole, Kendrick. Mm-hmm. They can put it all together in what they're trying to portray to you. Mm-hmm. It's whatever they're trying to do, they can add your stuff to it. Okay. To make it do it. I'm trying to hit your crowd too. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. want some of your audience as well. So mm-hmm. if I got to do that, I can make these beats, trap beats, with what I'm saying, mix it together, mm-hmm. give you high power. So do you think staying in, a, in one lane is what causes independent artists to stay independent? Uh, I feel like that one lane thing is for mainstream really i feel like that one lane thing is mostly them doing that what you mean uh mainstream does one lane really because you won't get a you're not gonna get a r&b song out of money bag yo he's not gonna sing to you you know what i'm saying nah. you know what i'm saying <laughs> <I> mean, <yeah. laughs> that would be weird as hell you feel me he's not gonna do it he's not gonna be like mm, test my range today no he's not gonna do that mm. i'm gonna go with his money hit the first time i'm gonna do it again then i'm gonna do it again uh Okay, so then how do you want, would you, what's the end goal for you? Do you want to be bigger than an independent artist or do you want to get a, a deal? Because that used to be the thing back in the day. We're going to get a deal, we're going to get signed for a million dollars, we're going to be straight, we're going to buy mama's houses. But that doesn't seem like the, the dream for artists now. I could be wrong. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with whatever comes my way as long as the numbers are right. If anything is correct in like any kind of way, even if it's like a, a two, three year deal, as long as I can flip it in my own way and mm-hmm. make it work for me, that's fine with me. I don't care what happens. So what if you stay independent, but you can, because I know that I have found out with the limited research I've been doing, yeah. that the independent artists can make like 20, 30 grand a month. I mean, I'm not saying that's the ceiling. I'm just mm-hmm. throwing a round number out there. Say 40 grand a month, yeah. doing shows in like smaller venues and just getting a, a respectable amount of streams. Would that, would that be something you would want as well? I would love that too, but you got to have core followers for that. And mm-hmm. to that, I got to hit the market some kind of way. I got to get it in everybody's face at the same time. And I don't know how. If I knew how, I would. 
I appreciate the honesty. A lot of people are like, I'm going to do this, this, and they, they just know they're going to make it. You don't know nothing. This is right. music industry. Uh, yeah, we don't know shit. Till people we love baby. <laughs> and then the next year, they was like, fuck you. Yeah, when they, they said <laughs> all that crazy shit. You feel me? It wasn't crazy to him. That's just how he felt yeah, at yeah. the moment. Well, to the, the world, yeah. it was inappropriate or whatever. But that's how he thought. felt about it at the moment, that's just how he was feeling at the moment. Everybody turned on you that fast. Took one night. You think he's back? Do I think he's back? I think he's working at it. But just... Throwing people under the bus ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen I hate to say it though. Some of his music seems to sound repetitive as far as sonically. I hate people overuse the word. That's because of what I just told you. Whatever works first, I'm gonna do it again. Until people yeah. are like, nah, I ain't working. So then why have why doesn't your music all sound the same? Because I never have done that. But your music sounds cohesive though. It doesn't sound like it's all the same. That's albums. Like if I was to make an album, then everything will sound the same. Okay. But if I'm doing a single run, I'm like I just did, I did an RB song. I did a Semi trap song. I did a melodic song. Okay. I'm gonna do another R and B song coming here soon. I might just straight rap on another song. But it don't. Okay, you saying outside of album yeah, albums? Yeah, outside okay. of albums, then it just sporadic. But the albums they're gonna be cohesive. That's just how I, I, I'm a visionary artist. Like I'm a visual, not a visionary. I'm a visual artist. <laughs> Sorry. You might be a young visionary. In nah, I ain't working hard enough to sound visionary. <laughs> nah. Why you saying that? Nah, I ain't doing it because I would have more motion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we gotta live too, though. You gotta yeah. pay your bills. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the downside to being an independent artist that I think people looking from the outside in don't realize is, well, why they ain't pop? Why this person? We still gotta go clock in and work. Yeah, I could spend every waking moment on this, but I'd be sleeping on the floor. Exactly. You and I don't me? think that's the wave in today's time. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I think y'all y'all would like to see me thriving. And, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? You surviving. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you already slim. I don't think we need to see you anorexic. You, you know? feel me? You know, bitch with a bobblehead. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what kind of, don't tell me where you work, but what kind of work you do now? Shit, I'm, I'm Michelin. Oh, okay, cool. I'm, okay. Straight tires. You like it? This is cool. It's money. Yeah. Okay. Too many people. Yeah, I worked out there. Me and Rod worked out there. I had to walk off that bitch. Yeah, cheese. <laughs> so many cheese. No, nah, we was, I think I was maybe 21. And I was working there and I was just like, man, I think I had, we, well, they've been working there. But I worked out there probably three months. I was like, this shit is not for me. And I said, yo, when my ride get here, because I was waiting on my mom at the time, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, I quit. And my boss, was, well, my uh, supervisor was like, man, cut that shit. I get back to work. Quit mm-hmm. playing. I was like, dog, when my ride gets here, <laughs> I quit. It's a wrap. <laughs> so she texts me or something, and I was like, I'll see y'all later. My ride is here. He's mm-hmm. like, you for real? I said, dead ass. I quit. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. Sometimes you know something. I got to encourage you to quit. <laughs> Nah, sometimes you know what stuff ain't for you, though. Yeah, yeah, manufacturing ain't for me. But mm-hmm. I do understand that it can create success for people. See, so, you got to find your room in there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to find out where you're supposed to be. There's so many departments in there, you just got to find out where you're supposed to be. I was in the trim room oh, yeah. with the, uh, the metal joints. The boring. Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was boring. so tired one time, I almost I half dozed off walking to get another tie. See, no. Yeah, so I, that's what let me know this ain't for me. That's how I did with third shift. <laughs> third shift. I'm like, bro, did I just fall asleep in the bathroom? <laughs> I've done that too. <laughs> I'm talking about an hour. I'm like, well, oh, oh yeah, but, no, no, no. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. Got to walk straight out of there. <laughs> yeah, see, that's crazy. Day before that, a dude was running from the police, comes to work anyway, and runs straight through the warehouse. Police chasing him. Stop playing. I'm dead serious. Did they tackle him? Yeah, they tackled the shit out of him. <laughs> I figured that was, I would have been dying laughing. I did. <laughs> They better be like, okay, I had no foes out. I had that motherfucker. Oh, you, boy. Oh, man, what? Y'all crazy. That was too funny. <laughs> that motherfucker come back through with a megaphone talking about, so everybody get back to work. Nigga, no. Everybody seen <laughs> that seen shit. That. We ain't going to work. <laughs> everybody seen that shit. We gonna talk about it. Hell yeah. At least 20 yeah, minutes. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to take a smoke break. <laughs> you did. We should talk about this. Eddie came through the side door. They mad at us. Why the fire door open? It's always open. <laughs> Shoot. <That's> crazy. So, <laughs> so what's... <laughs> I'm still tripping out the phone. You ran straight through the building, but sliding over machines and all. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Yeah. So, how we get? So, would you want if you could do it in a perfect world? Would you want to make a collaborative album with your brother? Yeah, I would have him make all the beats. That's what I mean. All the time. Me and him worked out a couple times, and ugh, he said he ain't doing no music. I already know. That's why I'm mad at him. You yeah. know that? Yeah, we we'll have to. <laughs> I need do, beats. <laughs> yes, man. We we'll have to do a petition for his ass. I got a whole file on my on phone of just quitting beats. I got like a good. 20, 30, 40 of them. They got all y'all names on them, and I'm trying not to use them. <laughs> well, send them to me just so I can listen to They got all y'all names on them. I don't rap. Them. I'm damn near 40. I but they rap. got all y'all names on them. <laughs> I'll do it to you, especially you, Roger. <laughs> he going to get in his seat, too. Mm-hmm. I supposed to got him last week, but I forgot about him. I was working, mm-hmm. so he probably mad at me. He stay like, working, though. That boy yeah. stay busy. What? 
That's that guy right there. Too much. So how did we get? So what? So what point would you be like? Okay, I can stop working and only focus on music. When my streams is like I'm doing like two. No, I'm gonna say I'm doing like ten, twenty thousand a day. If I'm doing ten, twenty thousand mm-hmm. streams a day, I'm done working. What's it take to do that? And what is that equal to in dollars? Uh, S- Give it to a, equal to about a uh, two to three thousand dollars a week. For real? Yeah. Depending oh, on what you're about, streaming off of. That's give or take. You said give or take ten, twenty thousand a day. Yeah. So the best thing to about do seventy thousand a week. The best thing to do really, if you try to get your streams up, is to get your music played in the club through title, because title will give you the most money back on your streams. Okay. So if you're getting your music played through the clubs that way, because the DJs mostly use title. So if you're getting it played that way. Your streams will go up. Mm. People will get engaged more, and plus you're making your money back right there, which is why people try to get in the club so often. So do you try to get your music in the club? Because it's a it's, very different vibe. It's very painstakingly obvious that I am not getting in the clubs, bro. It's not. Because of your style of music? I think it's because of my style of music. I've, I've, been, I've been talking about it lately. Like, I don't know. I think it's because of the type of music I make, but I hear all kinds of music in the club when I'm not here. You know I think what I'm it saying? depends on... Oh, you're talking about outside of this area. Yeah, when I'm I not here, yeah. it's uh, so you hear much, everything, yeah. but... <laughs> When I'm here, it's like, I'm, you're going to hear about 15, 16 songs. Do you think that depends on the club? Or nah, it's the people. The region? It's the people, because when you play different shit, they always like, stop playing that and play the shit I know. Every time. Yeah. they just like, hey, hey, I don't like this. Why are you playing that? You get home, Facebook, like 40 people. Oh, he was playing bullshit all night. He's playing the homies. So what about, because I'll agree with that. I've been places where, like, when I was stationed up at Virginia Beach, they, mm-hmm. they, they had one spot that they only played like soul hip hop, like Common, The Roots, and that. I, that was one of my favorite spots. Man, or, it might have been a certain night, but you whatever know, it was. You no know Common in my top 10. Yeah. You already know that. See what I'm saying? So that was, that was dope, but we don't have that here. Nah. Do you think that would work here? It would work here. We more. Not necessarily soul hip hop, but I just mean like a, a very niche. Night or a niche. I mean, they got the R and B night at uh some of the, some clubs, and they got. Is it the, real R and B or is it like trap R and B? It's trap R and B. We know that's the same thing. <laughs> you know where we at? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. Like depending <laughs> on where you at, you know where we at down here. We, yeah. Everybody here wants to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to compromise. Mm. That's just what it is. Because you, everything is driven off people. Right. Um, my music is driven off people. The clubs is driven off people. Walmart is driven off people. Oh, cool. So if you don't heed to the people, then you're not gonna get it very far. So do you want, have you had the opportunities to go a little further out where it's not so limited or such a ceiling on the type of music people are receptive to? Yeah, I, I do great up north. I do great mids, I believe Midwest. It. I do great, I do great probably like around Virginia, D.C. area. Yeah, we fucks with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but when it comes in, down, yeah. yeah, but once you come down, it's like. <laughs> we ain't trying to hear that shit. <laughs> this is the type of shit that killed me, bro. Is it's, it's all right. It's all right, bro. Because they respect the lyrics, but they yeah, don't want to Yeah, it's like, I like, no I was doing a show the other day, bro, <laughs> and I could, I could read the girl lives in front of me. She was like, I like this song, but I don't know him, so I can't turn up. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, just look up the song. Yeah, like, like what turn. the fuck? <laughs> I don't know him, so I can't really act like I like the song. I'm like, damn, bro. Yeah. Other, other girl agreeing, like, yeah, I, I feel that. So how do you get damn. away from that? Is there I a real no answer? idea. That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. How do I break through? That was like, here or that was? That was here. So I was saying? at the... Uh, you got the, the one on the bus. <laughs> no, I was, I was at the... Uh, I don't remember. I don't know them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but yeah. <laughs> I was at the... Uh, <laughs> was the, the networking... Network I know where yeah. yeah. I had performed and I was just seeing, reading people lips. You know my brother deaf, so I yeah. can read people lips heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like, my parents deaf, so you know. <laughs> you know, you know. Sign language production. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm like, shit. I, 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 I heard what you said without hearing it. So, do you think, and this is not to knock Netflix, because I do think that's a very good. Um, I love that thing. Yeah, I think it's, it's cool, a dope bro. ass concept. It's cool. It ain't for me because I'm a podcaster, but. It's for you, I promise. I'm too quiet and reserved. Everybody in there can come to your podcast, though. But see, they don't know who I am, especially this because you don't That's see me. That's why you pop out like, you know what I'm doing? No, I came, I drunk two Megalove Ultras, and I hauled ass. Well, I'll come with you and be like, it's my boy Skill. <laughs> he doing do this. Oh, my, Shit, my I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm going to mind my business. Mm-hmm. Where we go, though? Everybody need PR. We can go. It's stupid. This is for fun, though. <laughs> Everything is for fun. <laughs> Everything is for fun. I'm telling you. Get them checks come in. Oh, yeah. Hey, then it'll be lovely. But mm-hmm. um, So what do you, do you think more events like that would help? bring notoriety to 
the independent artist as a whole, or do you think that that is going to be its own? Those types of things will be its own niche. I feel or like niche, you pronounce? I feel like it could be if we didn't if we didn't do like such long sets. If it wasn't like forty people performing right now, it should be like oh, gotcha. this sets of people are performing, and these sets of people are performing, and these because because uh, once you add that many people, it gets crowded. People stop caring. People don't like this nigga still yeah. performing. I don't care. It's just another person. It's not a. Oh, it's event. too many back to back. Yeah, it's back not event to driven. Oh, right. It's gonna turn from the event to we at a bar now, and these people get on my nerves. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so how many, give or take? We just throwing numbers out there. I would say like ten. Yeah, we can do like ten performers depending on when you start it. Okay. And don't let everybody go over because that's uh, what it is. Because once you have one person doing three minutes, one person doing ten minutes, one person doing fifteen minutes, everybody like, bro, what the fuck? I got it went longer. Now I'm mad. And I don't. Uh, like animosity with this nigga because he couldn't he he let him go for this long or whatever. Mm, that's how they do used to do us at those mic nights. Yeah, they will stick me and Rod in there, either really really early mm -hmm. or like really really late when mm -hmm. nobody's really listening anymore. Right, and then you'd be like, because either you there too soon and nobody's there, or you go too late and nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, so it's kind of. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And for me, it's where wherever you place me in the show is where I feel like I'm respected. Like uh, that's how I feel like your respect for me and my music is. Yeah. If you like, oh, I'm a, you going first. I'm like, oh, I see how you feel about me. Right. You ain't no. I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do you ever get the thing like after you perform, then nobody really is loud and vibing, but after you get done, it boy, that shit was hard. That's that's literally what I do, bro. We like, used to go through that. I I learned from y'all that oh, you yeah. gotta take the show, like. I yeah. I try to suck the air out of the yeah. entire room. You ain't when I gonna give performing. me no props, so fuck it. I got I don't even care about no props. <laughs> yeah, the last one I did the Netflix and chill, I said I got no songs for no niggas. Drop my song. Oh, that's, well, the, that's, that's cool. That's off top, that's what I said. That's just <laughs> that's just making people go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. Like you know what I'm yeah. saying, I, I'm I learned that when you're on stage, everybody needs to. If you're not driving people's attention to yourself, then you're not doing it. And it's a weird dynamic because I see some people turn all the way up and nobody responds to it. See, you're not communicating with the audience. The you just audience bouncing gotta, through the audience. You just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. You got to get the audience engaged to being like, what's going on? Like, why am I talking? Mm -hmm. Like, I just did a show in Asheville mm -hmm. and I just straight talked to the audience for like five or six minutes in the middle of a song just to see what's what was going on. I got a song called Happy, Happy Birthday. I'm performing it tonight. Okay. And I, it's about to come out too, so. Okay. <laughs> but I got a song called Happy Birthday where I'm just pretty much just speaking to the crowd and mm -hmm. I do it all the time just engaging them to see how people are or whose birthday is it or we just start talking communicating like that so what's wait so in the middle of the song you just stop reciting uh, the words no the hook goes oh uh, happy birthday couple so mm -hmm. let's celebrate till tomorrow you have a good day shit I don't know Oh, we could try again tomorrow. Okay, so it's intentional. Yeah. But it makes somebody go, oh, he's talking to me. Yeah. Okay, you know I can saying? follow that. That makes a lot of sense. It's like, hey, happy birthday. It's like, I'm. you think I'm not singing a song, but I am. The whole time oh, I'm singing okay. a song. I thought you meant literally you stopped. The, the way I come in the song, I'm like, me, I had a good week. Me, I get no sleep. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> Shit like that. I'm just talking to you. Okay. It's the way that it's, it's set up. And the show, I set the, the show up the way I can engage the audience as much as possible. How so? What do, you, what do you mean you set up the show to? I got this song called I Want You where I just be like, oh girl, you're fine. And it's just like a little intro jump. Mm -hmm. And all I do in that part of the, sh the set is just walk around and see who is engaging with me through crowd. So okay. I'm not really here to talk to you or high five you or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I just want to see who's actually listening. So I walk through the crowd while I'm singing this song. And uh, I can visually see who's going to be locked in with me. Mm -hmm. And then I start picking you out from the crowd like, hey y'all, come up here. And then everybody else uh -huh. kind of feels kind of like, why he fooling with them? He must know them. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> and I don't know them at all. So how you start, what made you say, you know what, I got to do, so obviously you're going to make different music. Mm. But what made you say, I'm going to do this crowd engagement? Because a lot of people don't have good crowd press or stage Because I did uh, shows. I've done, I've done like maybe 200, 300 performances, 400 mm. performances. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Everywhere I could possibly perform. And I just, the way that I am, I, I got to get my engagement. It's pretty mm. much why I started doing the music, really. As a little small kid, I got nine brothers and sisters. You got nine brothers and sisters? I only met you and two of them. Exactly. Okay. I, I got nine brothers and sisters, <laughs> so it's, it's easy to get lost in there. So I'm like, bro. You the baby? I am the baby. Ooh, so I'm like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what's up? What I got to do? All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What I got to do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so crazy. it's kind of evolved to how can I? It's just stuck with you. Stuff you learn as a kid just kind of sticks with you. Yeah, it either grows or it becomes worse. Okay. You either fix it and grow on it or you let it consume you. 
Yeah. Okay, so then what's so if you're gonna just be doing singles and dropping those, mm. what do you when do you know what what has to happen for you to go, I I did I went about this the right way? Uh and how frequent do you want to drop the singles? I want to drop a single at least two every month. Okay. Do you give it a time, a little time to breathe yeah. and get one up. Yeah, so I can do my live performances. If I want to drop a video, drop a video. Walk around and talk about it, do some shows with it, you know? So you're going to basically drop them and, and keep an eye out for which one, so to speak, hits. Yeah. Okay. That's whatever works. But right now, literally, what I'm, what I'm literally doing, like you said, am I saving up the albums and I could drop 10 songs mm -hmm. here? I'm, I'm doing it low-key. People oh, okay. just not noticing it. Okay. All the songs I'm dropping, they go together, but people are not getting it. And you've been had all these, not all of them, but like some of them. Yeah, but I'm dropping them all together. They all go together. This is like an album, but... Okay. Instead of it being an album, because people send like, oh, you dropped 14 songs? Cool. That's an album. And just slide. Like, uh, who else got a song? Now it's like the first track, so the fourth you, track. So do you think it's too many, too much music today? No, nah, it's just presentation is crazy today, because... What you mean? People are just like, uh, no promo. You know how people would be back in the day three months out, like, all right, I'm going to come back, y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or here come this first video. It ain't no anticipation for you anymore. It's just like, pop up, here go my album, here you go. See, I think people should, I, I, again, I don't make no music no more, but mm -hmm. I think people, if you're going to make an album, you should put it out and allow it to breathe. Yeah. And I think people don't work on a single anymore. Like, if say I drop a seven song EP, mm -hmm. and I know this one is, is got a good, it's a really good single. Mm -hmm. They'll put that mug out, and then- Nothing go with it. They don't, they don't make a video, they don't- go and promote that song or like say that song and like two others so that mm -hmm. you say you could do a set where you have two opening songs so to speak and finish with that single mm -hmm. you could go around doing that and build up a single like there's some singles that are that have went super million times platinum that had to be slow grinded yeah, but people it's like a, the under the influence he tried that song two years prior to then going platinum on the, the radios it, as soon as he put it on the radio yeah because now more people can hear it what but I'm saying. if nobody's Nobody's heard it until you let people hear it. People not aiming to fire it. They just fire it. That's the difference. Oh. Uh, That's the, just like, all right, they go to market. Boom, I'm going to shoot it at it. That's it. Hopefully it catch. Hopefully I, I hit boy. something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It ain't like, I got this type of music. I know it can hit this area. I'm going to try to aim for 30. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't that. I'm going to try to target my, my trajectory. It's never that. It's always aim and fire. So what is your aim, your trajectory? My trajectory is I'm really trying to get Spotify playlisted. Or something where it's in people's faces already. Where how does that? How does Spotify playlisted work? You got to stream. You got to stream. You got to hit. It's got to. It's got to. Oh, this new music or whatever. It's got to rise. It's got to hit some kind of database part of the algorithm. Something's got to happen for it to catch. If it but, don't catch, it don't. It don't but catch. what you mean? It got to be. What? What does Spotify playlist? I don't know what that means. It's like rap radar or I just got on release radar because I had dropped this new song and I had got like. Four or five hundred plays off Swerve when it first came out. Ooh, okay. So when it first came out, it, it got on the release radar. Like, oh mm -hmm. shit! And I got some plays off of that. That got me up to like a thousand something plays. Are you talking about like when you go to Apple Podcasts and it shows like the top whatever? At yeah, the top? What that's people what people are mean, trending, kind of whatever. Yeah. Thing. And they put uh, all the trending songs together into one thing. But how long do, do those typically stay in rotation? I don't know. Though. They stay there as long as they're trending. They're, oh, for real? Yeah. So as long as they hot, they're gonna be there. Oh. Uh. Like uh, rap radar still got songs from two thousand freaking twenty in it. Damn, for real? If it's hot, it's hot. Okay. Mm -hmm. The playlist itself or the songs? The playlist itself. Or the song itself will stay in the playlist as long as it's hot. Do they rotate the songs out of the playlist? Probably every week. Rap Radar or just all of them? All of them. Okay. Do they make the playlist based on like style of like, like this yeah. is trap, this is drill, this yeah. is neo? Okay, so it's, it's genres of hip hop as well. Right. But I'm going more R&B when I put my stuff out now. I'm hitting R&B every time. Why are you, why are you going that direction? I wanted to be seen. I feel like there ain't nobody making a huge splash in R&B, so I'm just throwing my shit out there. Let's see if I can hit in that genre from right now. Do you want it to be in more of a Penn Griffey direction or more like a Chris Brown type direction? Probably like right in the middle. I ain't gonna lie. I think Penn Griffey, except for that last album, was terrible. But that first album, Trap Soul, that's, that album, I think is better than most of... The, this might be blasphemy. I think that just that collection of music is better than most of Chris Brown's music. But he doesn't have enough of it I feel to, like, to stand against Chris Brown. I feel like he has, his music hits, like you're saying, it hits when it hits. It, yeah, it's it, like, it ooh, hits. Okay. Bryson yeah, Taylor yeah, comes yeah. in yeah. with the shit. <laughs> but I feel like Chris Brown ain't been that serious 
in That's a while. That's what I mean. You okay, let me? me say, Chris Brown's newer music. Yeah. Just, I just make a bunch of shit and listen. I feel like he dropping what he what he likes, whatever he likes. He's, he's I mean, he don't. Out. Yeah, he's stupid rich, so it don't really matter. It don't really matter no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if something was to happen and it was traumatic or dramatic to Chris Brown, I'm pretty sure he'd kill. It'd be, you think so? it'd be a stupid album out. Okay, let me like clarify fame. this. Fame is. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Fame is crazy. Yeah, Every time something that. happens to my man, <laughs> yeah. he drops some crazy shit, bro. Okay, I'm going to clarify. Bryson Tiller's Trap Soul is better than the type but of that's Chris Brown's curly. Man. Some shit happened to Bryson Tiller to make Trap Soul. He lost his girl. And oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Didn't, I got to. What do you think about Gibeon? I love Gibeon. I do too. I like Gibeon. I like people that you can't copy. So if somebody come yeah, out singing, is unique you as come well. out singing like that, I'm like, you <laughs> yeah. got that from my man. It's like, you studied and tried yeah, to do that shit. Because that ain't no regular voice. So, you, no. so that's what you're trying to go with. So, not copy them. I just mm. meant. I need to be in that realm. Like, yeah. oh. Something unique. Yeah. I mean, your music is already unique, though. Yeah. Because you, and I know a lot of people rap and sing. Mm. But I think there's a difference between being able to rap and sing and actually being good at rapping and singing yeah. at the same time. And you have that. Yeah, there's people that rap and sing and there's people that that sing during rapping you feel me right yeah. same thing same yeah. thing yeah cause there's, yeah you can sing it not you a person can sing and rap doesn't mean they're great at it but yeah. they can pull it off so to speak yeah but I think you have that you can do it you know what I mean I have You're always good try it. to make it harmonious like whatever rapping I'm trying to do I want it to sound like it's got some kind of harmony to it I've always been like that it's gotta have some kind of melody or something mm -hmm. I don't wanna make the song well, yeah. I don't feel it Cause like for myself, I could never sing, but I always had melodies in my head that would be good choruses. But yeah. when you can't sing, doesn't really matter if you got good choruses in your head. <laughs> you yeah. gotta find somebody to sing. It. You feel me? But you could do that by yourself. That was the issue I was having. I'm like, I need you to sing like this. And motherfucker, like, oh, I can, I can do this, and it sound like that. And that's not, not what I'm looking, looking for, yeah. for at all. <laughs> Bro, I can do this. Let me just, let me just, <laughs> let me just think about this for a second. I can do this. Right. So tell me about. You said you got merch. What you got? Uh, my cousin and me, we. we he got the Dataji Mario. I'm a brand. Somebody wore their brand on yeah. the camera. We got the Dataji. What does that I'm mean? I'm a brand. This is a middle name, I think. This is hit my boy's name, his son's name. Oh, okay. Put together. And we got a. Uh, he got this thing going here. I got the pants on too. But uh, I like the pants. <laughs> I was looking at. I said, yeah. I need some of them. My man's got the business going. He got any kind of print you need. He got a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Shit popping. Okay. And we got a podcast we're building up right now. And we're trying to get the whole thing going. We're trying to build a stage over there. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, we don't even know. I don't even know yet. What's it going to be about? Uh, it's going to be just us chilling. Okay, well, if you need some help producing, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got a little practice. Yeah, yeah. We do need <laughs> but it. It's going to be yourself and the, the gentleman who does yeah, the clothing? Devin. Big Devin Hawkins. It's my guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where you meet Devin at? My cousin. Oh, okay, cool, cool, yeah. okay. So what's his, what's his, I mean, I don't know, I'm sure you don't want to speak for him, but what's his vision with his music, I mean, not music, his clothing? Man, I think he just want to be big. He just wanted, he just wanted everybody to, to feel how he feel about it. Okay. Because he is fucking dive deep into this. He is all the way in. Mm -hmm. Man's works for himself. This is what he do, day in and day out. He probably oh. printing up a t-shirt right now. How long have you been doing clothing? Since we got out of high school. Oh, he's been making clothes for a long time. Okay, so he's real passionate. About I remember when he used to get hotel rooms just to fucking print clothes in them. Damn. Okay. My boy been serious about this the whole time. So I just need, I think everybody should just see how serious he is about this. That's, that's all we need. Okay. Everybody should just tune in to see <laughs> what my man is doing. Because he's out of here. His mind is, he, he, he gets deep with the thing. So what, uh, so do you have merchandise that you... Oh, yeah, I collab with him all the time on what I'm thinking. If I think of something, I just go in there and be like, I want these type of shirts. Because right now, I'm uh, working on this album. It's called What's Next. Okay. And it's really the short, this version of what I was thinking. Because mm -hmm. the whole album name that I thought of is, there's nothing in the past to look forward to, so what's next? Damn, okay. So I just chose what's next out of that. But there's nothing in the past to look forward to. I've been saying that my, pretty much my whole adult oh, yeah, life. Yeah, because it's already happened. You can't change it. I don't even care anymore. I can't do nothing. One thing about me, I don't stress. If I can't do nothing about it, I can't do nothing about it. That's I ain't it. never seen you irritated when you was younger. If I can't do nothing about it, I can't do nothing about it. And I no longer care anymore. Okay. I've been pissing people off for years. <laughs> so you're going to take merch tonight? Do you typically have it at your shows? Or? Yeah, I normally have it, but I've been slacking. Sir. I've been slacking. You got to have the merch. I got to have it all. keep it in the car. Yeah, knowing what I'm, I've been saying on this camera, I know all this stuff, but I don't, I don't be doing it. That's why I'm telling you. I can't make no album. <laughs> 
You terrible, man. I'm going to let you get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what's coming up next? You got a show tonight? I got a show tonight. Oh, yeah, wow. at Coffee on the Ground. Me and my boy Rello we finna murder. Oh, really? Yeah. Me and Rello XP. He's my guy. He's one of my favorite artists around here. Oh, we just shot to Okay, we yeah. did. He, he told you about it? Mm-mm. I ain't talked to Rello in, in a second. I ain't seen him in a minute. We I just shot like, a, uh, the web series me and Mo working on. Word. Yeah. That's that, what's up. Yeah, I'll show you a little bit of footage. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's oh, coming. Oh, my guy. That's coming soon. Okay, that's what's yeah. up. Rello doing big things. Shout out to Rello. I fuck with that guy. <laughs> Long way. Oh, before you go too, what artists have you worked with so far besides the, I'm sure you worked with more, but and mm-hmm. what artists do you want to work with around here that you haven't? Uh, I'd like to get a hook on Scully. Okay. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Or uh, I got to I gotta work on my boy. Uh, dang. Who I'm thinking? Hmm. Who I need? I like to work with uh, Cusco. That'd be cool too. I think it's spelled with a K. Yeah, I've seen it, but I don't know who they are. I like to work with him too. Or AWOL. I like to do a song with AWOL. AWOL hit me up the other day. We can make some shit too. I don't know who AWOL is. What? Yeah, get AWOL up here. I don't know who that is. AWOL, you up next? You don't know about you, bro. Uh, okay. And who have you worked with in the last couple years that you did you did you work with? In the last couple years. Did you wouldn't mind work? I mean, sure you wouldn't mind working with any of them again, but I'm saying that oh. you was like, oh, I got to get another song with them. Man, I couldn't. I did 147 features a, huh? a year before. I did 147 features on purpose just to see who would do what. So, you ha- you invited 100? I've just been in the studio every day. So if anybody needed me to do anything, I'm like, here you go. Let's do a hook. I'm not charging nobody nothing. I'm just doing it. So you would get out of work and just go down to the studio? Just to see what people were doing because I was trying to see if my name could get buzzed. Through anybody else's. And you ended up doing 147 features. 147 features. Only 10 songs came out. Huh? Why only 10? Do you happen to know why so little came out? I have no idea. All I know is 10 songs came out. That's it. How was that process? That is infuriating to do 147 <laughs> songs and only 10 of them come out. One time I went in there to do a song with a dude. I did my verse in the hook and the dude was like, hold on, I got to get my rap book real fast. I'll be right back. And left the studio and didn't come back. Well, you might have scared the shit out of him, sir. You are talented. I mean, rap, though. We up here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> shit, rap. We he here. get his rap book and didn't come back. He did not go get the rap book. He went straight to the car. And I, like, the studio don't got cameras. I see you back out of leave. Yeah, they definitely got cameras. Yeah. Like, well, come on, man. That's fucked up. You know, Bob Studio Time had me come up here to do the song with you for you to just like. Oh, he invited you. Yeah, to... like, no, I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. Can you say that. who it was or we're going to leave him alone? We're I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> you go, I'm going to find out that we get done. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. Oh, snap. Okay. Let me get your social social medias. Everybody think I'm saying social security. No, social security. <laughs> <There you> Two. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Uh, but yeah, it's fuck Ricky on Instagram. Yeah. Be. Yeah, that throws me off every time I see it. <laughs> it's because fuck that nigga Ricky here I'm horrible. You know what I'm talking about? Nah, he definitely don't. You know why? Because I be singing. That's why. So. <laughs> so I'll be rapping too. Leave me alone. But uh, it's Ricky Tan on everything else. Spell it for me. I know how to spell it. But. R-I-K-K-I-T-A-N. Thank you, sir. You know? All right. Because of the, the guy from the boat. I got that kind of move. You feel me? That's how I feel. I watch Rush Hour and I'm looking at my boy. I'm like, mm-hmm. I like that motion. All right, Ricky, get your ass up. It's time to go. <laughs> he grabbed that man. That motherfucker whole room stood up. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, he crazy. That's man. the vibes, my boy. He That's crazy. motion. I'm going to check that out there. That's the uh, motion. I want to say thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Every single time. Let me know. Yes, sir. We're getting up out of here. Thank you for listening. Thank you.